Hey, you guys, it's me, Danielle. If you're new here, welcome. I know it's been a minute. I had started recording several different videos, actually, and either I got sidetracked or I had to stop them and or I feel like I was missing some stuff or stumbling over my words like I'm trying to do right now because I've been so busy, like just with life and taking the time, you know, to just be with y'all and make sure that I'm understanding certain things, you know, before, you know, coming out here, I try to make sure that I'm never leading anybody astray and I have been just stumbling over my words. So forgive me if y'all hear me say, okay, several times in my messages, cause I noticed that that's just my word, like, okay. So I wanted to come on here because y'all has been pressing this on my spirit for a couple of weeks now. And he actually led me to scripture this morning. And it actually was talking about in the book of Matthew 23. Okay. And you know how they give like a little subtitles before the paragraph of scripture. So it talks about Jesus warns about the scribes and the Pharisees. And he kept pressing like those who are out here trying to say, oh, be careful that you don't end up with a religious spirit or these people have a religious spirit if they're actually, you know, walking in holiness, you know, or telling you to come out of sin, that these are the ones that have the religious spirit. And y'all was just showing me how these ones who are out here, these so-called prophets, these so-called pastors, these so-called teachers, evangelists, whatever you want to call them, they are the ones really with the religious spirit. The same way that the Religious spirits were the ones who were the Pharisees and the scribes who were out here testing, okay? They were testing Yah, you know, testing Jesus, right? They were accusing him, mocking him, you know, trying to find fault within him. You know, they even used scripture. Now, hold, hold tight to what I'm saying. They used scripture, okay, to try to rebuke or refute Jesus himself. And we also know that when Jesus was walking here himself, he spoke to these people, these Pharisees, these religious spirit ones, if if we're going to use that, okay? And these scribes, he spoke to them in parables. Because number one, if you do not have the mind of Christ, if the Holy Spirit is not dwelling within you, you don't have any knowledge or wisdom. Your wisdom is of the world, which is considered darkness, You are either following after the Holy Spirit with all your heart, your soul, and your mind and allowing him to transform you so that you can walk in the light, okay? Walk in the same light that he has or you are walking in darkness. It's no in in between. It's either light or dark, okay? That's number one. So the Pharisees and the scribes thought they were in the light. Hear what I'm saying? They looked like they were in the light. They had scripture memorized, like they were in the light. They were preaching doctrines of men, okay? And holding tight to their own traditions of men, okay? Because these were their traditions that they created. These were their doctrines that they took and manipulated and used scripture to form their own doctrine. Just like how y'all was reminding me how um, in one of the dreams that I had when I came out here, and I mentioned this before, and um, he had told me, I wanna say in my notes, about the church crusaders. And I was actually brought that back to me it was on, on 9, 13, 2021, approximately between 1 20 AM and 1 39 AM. And I just remember hearing the words as I lay down and I've said this in another video. So if you're, you've heard it before, I'm just saying it again because he was bringing this back to me. And he was said, I am not playing with you. And he, he was tired of you, you church crusaders. Going back to these Pharisees and scribes, And I started to research even how the church crusaders came. The church crusaders came and start, you know, pretty much started to make their own religion. Okay. Off of doctrines and trying, and it was a lot of things that happened to try to force people under certain religion, which a lot of people are in religion and they don't um, have any form of true relationship of Jesus or any truth in their life that show that they actually have a true relationship and knowing who Jesus truly is. People can quote scripture all day long, right? They could go to church all day long. They can go do random acts of kindness all day long. They can go and um, visit homeless shelters and be a volunteer all day long. They can um, go to Bible study every Wednesday all day long, 
they can do everything that looks good, okay? That looks good, just like the Pharisees were out here doing everything that looked good, okay? To the outward eye, they looked righteous, they looked holy, right? Um, I think even back then, the priests and this, you know, these priests and the scribes and stuff, they were considered holy and had this certain access, you know, to temples and all type of stuff, right? They, they were following all of these traditions and keeping so-called keeping all of the laws and commands and all of this type of stuff. But when we start to read here, we start to read and notice that the Pharisees and the scribes were the hypocrites. These were the ones that were actually coming up against the truth and the true truth, which is Jesus himself. And this is why I think this um, part of the scripture is very profound because you have people now that are still stuck from these church crusaders and you can probably go do your own research and just to let you know the church crusades sidetrack i'm gonna divert here so just hang with me because i feel like i need to kind of pull it up a little bit the crusades were a series of religious wars between christians and muslims and it started primarily to secure secure control of holy sites okay considered sacred by both groups all right now you can go and read more um, in understanding in it for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. But it pretty much also helped to solidify the role of how the uh, Pope over the Roman Catholic Church and how most of the religions, okay, are stemming from Roman Catholicism, okay? And so a lot of people, for example, and I'll just take a small example to show how you know, clearly the Pope is a good example of a Pharisee and a scribe. People are worshiping this man. Outwardly, he looks like he would be righteous, right? Outwardly, he looked like he would be holy, right? But given the things that are coming out of his mouth, right? Like when y'all use this description of said, it's not what goes into the man that defiles him, but what comes out of his mouth. Now, even that is spiritually speaking, right? Now, when you hear some of the things that comes out of this man's mouth and other people to the like that are Pharisees, right? You have to pay attention to the fruit, okay? The fruit of these individuals is going to be how they act, their appearance, inner and outer, the things that they say, how they operate, what they do, okay? Now, the Pope is a good example of the Pharisee, okay? Because he likes, he's the one that's giving control to be able to change doctrine, okay? And we already know that they picked and chose what scripture goes into the Bible, okay? This is why you need Jesus and have a relationship with Jesus so Jesus can actually come to you and help you to rightly divide the word in which they have put together, all right? And to be able to have um, wisdom and understanding of the secrets that have not been made yet known. And he said that in scripture, not everything has been made yet known unto man, Okay. So there are certain things that y'all has purposely hidden just the same way as he spoke in parables because he is going to reveal his truth and he's going to give only his truth, his wisdom, his knowledge, his secrets, okay, to only those who are in the Messiah, who are in Christ, who actually have a whole relationship with him, okay? It's a lot of people right now and he told us to be, you know, be mindful that they were going to come. He talked about the false prophets and those like the Hananias and the Shemaiahs. Okay, but then he also warned us about the, the scribes and the Pharisees. Okay, now I'm going to now divert back, but I, would, I wanted to say like the Pope is a good example because he talks about, you know, he even is saying like homosexuality is okay. You know, he has um, people thinking that he is able to forgive people. And a lot of people in Roman Catholicism and the Catholic, you know, religion, right? They're going to see men. It's no different than idolatry. Going up to these men, making them idols, going to confess their sins to men, and then allowing a man, okay, here on earth to try to forgive them for their sins, which we know nobody has the authority to forgive anybody for their sins. And again, there is no forgiveness, okay, without repentance. Y'all will not forgive not one soul out here unless they have repented, okay? He came down here to call people to himself. And then when he was calling them to himself, he was going to clean them up 
and provoke them, okay, and invoke them to also come into repentance and have a fear of him and a true reverence for who he really is and to learn to be submitted to him in the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to continue to do his good work in that individual so that he may get the glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So that would be a number one good sign, but then you have these other hidden ones like these so-called prophets out here, right? Claiming that they hear a word from the Most High Yah. I've already spoken about majority of these people. You know, you got the Tommy Oriamis, you got the Marcus Rogers, you have the Joshua Giles, you have the uh, Tiffany Montgomerys, you have the Kingdom of God Matters. You can go on and on and on, right? And I'm saying the King Kingdom of God Matters because y'all had me go over there recently and go to her community board and she actually had a quote saying, like basically, I'm not going to say it verbatim, but pretty much was saying God is obligated to pretty much provide provision for for whatever that he's called you to. Like making it seem like y'all works for us, that he has to do something for us. And I'm like, see, these are these Pharisees out here that look righteous, right? That have a certain type of look, but they want nothing but gain from the world and in worldly recognition, Okay, and this is actually what the um, scripture starts to go into. So let me get into it. All right. In uh, Matthew 23, it says, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. And y'all really highlighted that to me, too. And I want to stop there in verse two, because a lot of people are out here off of their own accord. Okay, off of their own authority. Okay. And they have propped themselves up in positions that they were never called to. And this is how y'all kind of gave it to me. And these Pharisees and the scribes that are out here right now, the false ones that are out here right now that are um, on all of these platforms out here that have huge followings and congregations, okay, the Pharisees, all right, and these scribes are your religious leaders, okay, because they know religion, Hear me and hear me well. They know religion and they're going off of traditions and doctrines of man. But they are fooling people out here to make people think that they are have been indwelled with the Holy Spirit, which is, which is not true. We already know there's false signs, miracles and wonders. And we also know that even in the New Age community, OK, that the demons out here, you know, that operate under the realm of Satan has empowered his children too to be able to have some type of understanding. All right. And it's more, it's coming from the occult knowledge. All right. So just because you see a sign and act in a wonder, don't be fooled. And he was saying that these people have put themselves in a position in, in the seats of his children. Cause remember he called Moses, right? He anointed Moses and he sent Moses out. But these other ones, they haven't been sent. They sent themselves. Right. So they've actually been out here and been out here for a while. And they are sitting in the seats, he said, of Moses, meaning these people that have been out here for a while, that's seducing people with doctrines of devils or deceiving spirit with a tickling ear message. They taken the seats, seats of the ones. OK, that actually should be out here teaching the truth being led by the Holy Spirit. What I'm saying is, is for those of you who you know that y'all has called you to come out here and teach whether you want to or not and to understand his truth, then you are obligated, number one, to come out here to do that. Holy Spirit led, of course. But these are the seats of when he talks about his saints out here. Okay. Then y'all also, he was reminding me of this bag. Um, it was a tote bag that I saw out one day. And it was like a scripture, I guess, paraphrased. And he said, I created you to hear my voice. And it caught my attention when I left. And I kid you not, I went to a store the other day and this bag was there, the same one. So it was like a double confirmation. Like I created you to hear my voice, the voice, thy voice. And I bought it because I knew that he has created me to hear his voice. Now, keep. I'm going to keep going on, okay? So it also states in 20. 23.3, it says, all therefore whosoever they bid you observe that observe and do, but do not ye after their works for they say and do not. So right here in verse uh, 23.3, he's pretty much saying like, don't even listen to what they are saying, right? You can observe and watch everything that they're doing, right? You can follow after their works, but they don't even do what it is that they are even saying. So everything that they're out here preaching and teaching 
and um, saying out here, right? They say all this stuff, you know, but they're not even doing it themselves. These are the ones out of their lips. They seem like they have reverence, right? And act like as if they're walking in the truth, right? And act like as if they honor y'all, but they're honoring y'all with their lips, all right? But their heart, he says, is far from me. It's worship in vain, right? It's speaking scripture in vain. It's teaching in vain, okay? So we're going on to verse four. It says, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers, right? He goes on to say, but all the works, all their works, they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And so when I was reading this, I was like, y'all is telling us right here that these are the Pharisees are the ones, right? That do these type of outward works to be seen by man. And I had to look up the word phylacteries, okay? Because I wanted to know what that meant. So I'm going to tell you what phylacteries mean. And I hope I say that right. The phylacteries are two small square letter boxes containing scripture passages on slips of paper that are traditionally worn on the left arm and head by Jewish men during morning prayers. Okay. So he's saying right here in 23, five, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, right? So they're looking like they're holy. And we see them right now today. A lot of Jewish people walk around like that. They have the prayer. They look like they are so holy and keeping all these traditions. They can do that all day long, but they haven't probably met Jesus at all. So if you haven't met Jesus, you're still going to hell. You understand what I'm saying? If you have not met Jesus, you're not saved. If you can't tell me about nothing dealing with Jesus, not scripture, not what the Bible says, but what did Jesus do for you? Because y'all was making it very clear to me too that a lot of people have made the Bible an idol. So they exalt this Bible as being the um, the final authority, like the final word is if y'all is not living or speaking still. And if that was the case, it was like, what did he die on the cross for? You know, because he died on the cross to leave us with the Holy Spirit. And he also said that he was gonna lead us and um, teach us and guide us into all truth. He also said his, he is the living word. He didn't say the Bible is the living word. He said he is the living word. Jesus is the word. He is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. He is the living word because he is alive. Okay. Now he can use scripture written by man. And when I say uh, by man, I'm, these scriptures were written by people that were following him. This is why you have to ho have the Holy Spirit so he can rightly divide this word for you. If you do not have Jesus in your life, and when I say in your life, Jesus will leave you with the Holy Spirit and dwell inside your temple, you will not, um, you will not have the wisdom and understanding. I promise you that. That's why I say it all the time. I could say, um, read scripture or, or get something given to me by the Holy Spirit and another person can have a different interpretation of that. And, and what that's going to come down to is whether that person's Holy Spirit filled or not, because when you're a Holy Spirit filled, you will be in one body speaking by the same spirit. Okay. It won't be all of this all over the place. So he goes on to say in scripture, verse 23, six, and love the uppermost rooms at the feast and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the market and to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi, but be not ye called rabbi for one is your master, even Christ and all ye brethren and call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father, which is in heaven. You see how people right here don't even read scripture for themselves because they be calling the Pope father. You see what I'm saying? I'm like these people not even reading scripture. And then it made me think about how deceiving the enemy is. But anyway, in verse nine, it says, and call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father, which is in heaven. Okay. Number uh, nine, I mean, excuse me, I'm on verse 10. Neither be called masters for one is your master, even Christ. Now this right here stuck out because when he said, talking about masters here, we have people that are propping themselves up, like giving themselves these official titles, like, oh, I'm a prophet. And how dare you disrespect me because I'm a prophet or I'm a prophetess. So you need to respect me. Or, you know, I am an apostle 
or I am an evangelist, or I am a minister, or I am a pastor, or I am a priest. These are the things that he said, do not even pretty much give yourself labels because he is the only person that the label should be. Um, when I say label, okay, he's the only person that we should be looking to. Okay. Cause we only have one master. All right. And that is Jesus Christ himself. We only have one y'all, right? We're not going to be following after men, right? And men with titles. The only person that we should be following after is y'all and everything that we do should be glorifying y'all and everything that we say should point back to Jesus in y'all. Okay. Cause we know that Yehoshua is y'all. Okay. So it goes on in verse 11. It says, be he that is greatest among you shall be your servant and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So he's already telling us here too, like these people who try to puff themselves up, which we see right now, right? We have plenty of false people out here, right? These people who are looking the part, and I'm telling you, right? We got some people out here, they, they, they won't even come out here to quote unquote give a word unless their hair is in every single right place or unless, I don't care if it was in wee hours of the morning, but they had to make sure that they put on a, a, some type of foundation on their face to come out here to give a word or their hair had to just be just right in order to give that word or they want to make sure that they are being seen or making sure that the pose is the pose is the pose. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I have seen people be like, oh, I'm about to use. <laughs> it was a while back that as a person was supposed to give a word, she stopped and trying to make sure like, oh, I love this lighting. I'm about to use this my you know, photo for the video. That type of vanity. And a lot of people out here that are still walking in that vanity alone, that tells me that they have not met Jesus yet or with the Holy Spirit. And if they did, then it don't take that long to try to prune and process you. OK, and I'm not saying people cannot hear. But I'm saying at some point there should be a processing. Okay. And so these people that are out here with, um, adorning themselves like the Pharisees were and making sure they have every single necklace on or every single ring and every single earring. Um, men and women be dazzling themselves outwardly and have to have the front row seats. You know, they, these are the ones that's taking y'all money and going and having front row seats at the games or, you know, having the biggest churches or having conventions and all this type of stuff, charging you guys money. These are the ones that still have the prophetic coaching in all type of coaching sessions and taking your money. And then they're taking your money, you know, to enlarge the borders of their garments. Okay that they love the uppermost rooms at the feast, okay? The chief sits in the synagogue, right? Like these are your ones that are sitting inside of the church right now that they, you know, no one can even talk to that pastor or preacher, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Can't tell them nothing. They gotta show you that they're um, sitting here wearing Gucci this and all this other foolery that's going on out here. I think I mentioned before too in another video, like the prophet Lovies and all these different people, they are, they are false. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit at all like you got to pay attention to their fruits okay going on to uh 23 13 he said but woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for ye neither go in yourselves neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye devour widows houses and for a pretense, make long prayer. Therefore, ye shall receive the greater damnation. And that took about took me out this morning. So all of these people out here, right, that are pretty much when he's saying taking these people are taking from people. There are people that are so deceived that they're literally being number one, they're blinded and being robbed at the same time due to their lack of wisdom and knowledge, which we only get this type of light from walking with the Holy Spirit and walking with Jesus himself having a relationship with Jesus himself, okay? Because he's still living. He is a spirit, okay? He is living. Trust and believe that I, I know for a fact he is living. So he's saying to them, these are the ones that would say a prayer like before their video or make some grand outward, you know, appearance looking like, oh, like they're really in touch with the most high God by these long prayers and all this extra stuff. But he's saying, um, you're a hypocrite for these people that are doing that, right? And they're going to hell. Then verse 15, woe unto you scribes and Pharisee hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte 
And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. When I read that this morning, and I hope I got this word right. Basically, he was saying that they're already going to hell and anybody else is listening to them. They're making them just as much, you know, uh, be put in the same predicament as them, which is going to hell. But double times of what they are at double for the person that is following after these people. OK, hear me, hear me. Well, he said when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves, because y'all look at things two ways. He either looks at you as, you know, clean or unclean. And y'all was even high. And I know this is off topic, but we have a way in which we think is okay. But y'all will look at things and be like, that's nakedness in him. That's sin to him. And I remember like, even for me to like to have my pajamas that are like, you know, the just regular pajamas, like they come like the matching sets, like a shorts and a top that I would feel as was modest. Right. I remember y'all giving me dreams like your shorts were too short. And I didn't feel like they were that short. But now when I was, I got rid of all of that stuff. But when I did, you know, the ones that he was showing me in my dream, I, I thought that they were okay. But then when, after he started to cleanse me up, I was like, oh, these do kind of feel kind of short or, oh, you know, things like that. Or then like when he gave me the dream about um, how he wanted me to dress, like he used a person that was a Caucasian lady in my dream in a dressing room. And she had tried on a dress and she's like, oh, I wish my, the sleeves, I kid you not. I wish the sleeves were down here. She marked her arm to her forearm to her elbow. Okay. And then the dress, even though it was like to her knees, she reached down closer to her ankles. I knew what the Holy Spirit was showing me. I know it's hard to find stuff like that. And I'm heat intolerance. I'd be asking the Lord to help me, you know, because to me, even like our short sleeves, I told you the sleeves are getting shorter and shorter and shorter, shorter. So the more skin we are showing, that is considered nakedness to, to, to y'all. And he kept showing me like nakedness nakedness or even you know how people can go out the shower and people that maybe you know not as dressed in front of their kids or coming up he was showing like dude in a dream he gave me a dream like dude quit going out in front of people where you are naked i kid you not like where everyone can see you like y'all is not even playing about anything that is considered to him unclean that that's unclean i even read somewhere too that you know a person sleeping naked in their bed he see them as naked. That's not, that's not something he want to look upon. Even if you're married, just to be straight up, just, you know, naked laying around just with nothing on. Okay. And I kid you not, it may sound strange to people, but he said, these people won't be able to handle the truth. Just like the Pharisees, when he was calling them out and calling out their sin and tell them how wrong they were, they couldn't handle the truth. Just like people can't handle the truth now. You know, like I told you before, before I closed my comment section, I had somebody trying to say they had a whole ministry, but they they was um, sending me a message under a different name or email because they didn't want me to know what their ministry was. But they were trying to condemn me for having a religious spirit. And then when I rebuked them, then they wanted to go off and say that I'm like, look, you know, this is why many are called if you are chosen. And if they knew the Holy Spirit, then they would understand the difference and have the revelation that the Holy Spirit gave me on what's a true Pharisee and what's not. OK, people are trying to keep their life here, not realizing that they won't have eternal life. So a lot of people are trying to straddle the fence of not having to lay down anything in order to follow after Jesus. And when Jesus started walking around back then, OK, just like he's tapping people now and knocking on their door and asking for them to open the door so he can um, dwell inside their temple. He people left everything. That's what people keep forgetting. He said, come follow me. They were quitting their jobs. They were walking away from family to go follow after him. You understand what I'm saying? They were letting go of everything to follow after him. But many people right now haven't even had that experience. Some don't even have that type of testimony of, of leaving anything. If anything, they left stuff, but they were finding their own ways to try to go back and capitalize to get gain back whatever it is that they had to lay down anyway. So they never were willing to lose it in the first place. And he will test people like that too. And then some people are um, like these people out here saying, God called me to do coaching. No, he didn't. They call themselves to do coaching. Okay. He didn't lead them to make a business off of the word because we know that the word is for free. So that should tell people right there. If the word is for free, then why would y'all be telling people, yeah, charge people for prophetic coaching when you should just be going to preach the word and give people a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge that he gave to you for free quote unquote, if he was giving it to you, because I know for a fact, he ain't telling nobody that is really about this word and this walk. I mean, to be selling the word. 
Moving on, it says um, in verse 13, I was in 13. I was, oh, I read 13 through 15. So it says 23, 16, woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Okay. Ye fools and blind for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold and whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever swear by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. I hope I didn't read the same part. He said, whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, swear by it and by all things thereon. And whoso, whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it and by him that dwelt therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, swear by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law judgment mercy and faith now this is another thing that you will realize too like the true voices for y'all are talking about his judgment or talking about his mercy and having faith in the most high y'all through his son jesus okay but you see the the pharisees back then was doing the outward works like, oh, going in here, uh, paying the tithe. You know, they were going in here doing this outward adorning type of thing, this outward trying to look the part to get these applause from men. But they were neglecting everything they had to do with Jesus. OK, because we know that every single um, disciple and sent one from the Most High Yah always spoke about judgment and repentance and, you know, coming out of sin. All right. So then he said, um, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint, anise, and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment and mercy, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. So he's saying, yeah, you want to do, you want to halfway do stuff. You do this over here. You'll talk about this over here. But the real uh, root of the matter you're not talking about these things. And this is what we see now. Like there's a lot of pastors and preachers and they giving half truths. They telling some, okay, of the truth, but not really giving the full scope of the truth because they want to be liked by men. Okay. They want the validation of men. They want to be famous in front of men. They want to be glorified before God. That's to be honest. They're glorifying themselves and want people to worship them. And they have made themselves idols before men. Okay. So he said, ye blind guides would strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Did you hear that? And how many people do we see that are out here doing a whole lot of um, stealing? You know what I'm saying? Um, doing things through deceit, uh, malicious gain. Okay. And how they're receiving and they're receiving in an abundance of excess. You know what I'm saying? Like these television evangelists, these false prophets all over YouTube and off of YouTube and all these false teachers, pastors, preachers, you name them. They are full of extortion and excess. Verse 26, thou blind Pharisee cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also. So again, y'all are saying they have the appearance of looking righteous and holy, but inside they are very unclean. Okay. They're unclean. And it said in verse 27, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited septuaries, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. This about took me out this morning. So you have people out here, right? That they have an appearance like you have seen some people that are very beautiful out here, right? They adorn themselves and men, you know, very handsome out here, right? But y'all are like, okay, don't get fooled by their appearance, okay? Because on the inside, in the inside is what truly matters is the spirit, okay? That's what really matters is your spirit. Y'all is looking at people by their spirit. He's saying they can be beautiful and handsome all day, 
right? They can have all of the, the best of the best on. They can have the best church. They can have the best car. They can have the best of this world. It don't even matter. But he said, but they're, they're full of dead men's bones and all of the uncleanliness because they're also the blind leading the blind and they're dead inside. Because if you don't have Jesus, okay, then you're not alive and you're not free. Okay. So if they're dead, then they're leading more people who are also dead as well. And those men's bones are also on their hands because you are accountable for what you are saying and uh, teaching people. And y'all hold you accountable. Just like when he was like, your, their blood would be on your hands when he was talking to Ezekiel. That's why I'm like, uh, I, I ain't got time for nobody's blood to be on my hands. All right. Um, Verse 28, even so ye outwardly appear righteous. Come on, Holy Spirit. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. See these people out here, they are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish these sepultures. I think that's how you say it, of the righteous. So they garnish and let me see what the this word means, because I think I'm really messing the word up. But y'all can go read this for yourself. But it pretty much means it's a burial place. OK, a burial place. So they garnish the burial place of the righteous. Is pretty much what he's saying here. And he said, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves. OK, so he's saying like these people, they're not witnesses of Jesus. OK, they're not attesting and being a witness to who Jesus is. These are witnesses of their own self. OK, of their of, of themselves. They're not giving a account. They're not giving a word. They're not giving a testimony. They're not giving a revelation. They're not giving a word of knowledge. They're not giving a prophecy or anything coming from the most high. Yah. OK, not coming from Jesus. Yehoshua, Jesus. No, they're not, they're not being a witness to him. They are being a witness of themselves, just like the Pharisees were a witness unto themselves. And he goes on to say that ye are the children of them, which killed the prophets. Not only that, he said, these are the children of them, which killed the prophets. So basically saying that they witnessed to themselves. And then the people that he sent out here to speak his word, right? The prophets, the apostles, the disciples, right? They killed all of them. Why? Because they didn't like the truth, just like the Pharisees didn't like the truth. Just like right now, when people come out here and speak this truth, they're like, that's not true. God wouldn't say that. God wanted me to be happy. God wanted me to be wealthy. God wouldn't make me suffer. God wouldn't. Okay, you're going to find out and you're going to find out the long way and the wrong way. Okay, when we have to stand up here and he says, depart from me, get away from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. A lot of people are workers of iniquity out here and he's not going to play no game and he's not going to have no mercy on that. Okay. Uh, verse 32, fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Come on with it. What I just say, these people, all of these Pharisees, the Pharisees and the scribes, you guys, they ended up in hell. And whoever they was teaching and was following after the Pharisees and the scribes and doing their traditions of man, you know, and, and teaching doctrines of man and following the doctrines of man versus choosing to follow after the Holy Spirit himself, follow after Jesus himself, you end up in hell. They weren't saved, and so they went to hell, okay? If you're not saved, not born again, don't have an account of anything of how the Holy Spirit has transformed you, how you have met Jesus himself, okay? I don't care how much scripture you read, Jesus is speaking and he is talking and he is leading people into the truth. If you don't have no truth that has been given to you personally by Jesus himself, you are not saved because you have to be baptized by the Holy Spirit, and then you're going to worship him in spirit and in truth. He is going to pull on your heartstrings. OK, and he will prick that flesh and pierce your heart so that your heart can be more like him. And then he was telling the Pharisees like the greatest commandment, of course, was to love God above, you know, everything with all your heart, soul and mind. Right. But then to love your neighbor as thyself. He was talking to them because they loved themselves very much. Right. The Pharisees love themselves to the point of narcissism. Right. You know, people that are um, and I hate to use the word narcissism. They self, 
you know, self idolize, right? If you would take that good care of yourself or, you know what I'm saying? Then you should be able to also, when somebody comes to you in need, be able to help your brethren out. But these individuals didn't want to help nobody. They were selfish. They were selfish and they only cared about themselves. Okay. And this is another thing. You're these false teachers and stuff. They're out here off of selfish gain, stealing and robbing from the sheep. While you have people out here that are truly wanting to um, see the sheep not be lost anymore, right? Because if I have been made free and he has shown me the truth, then I want to go out here and run out here like how they were in scripture to spread the truth and the good news. Because when y'all call me, that's all I could think that I wanted to do. Like, oh my gosh, he set me free. So I want to come out here to help other people to be free, not by a charge. And he also talks about in scripture too, like these are the ones that are out here trying to charge money. They were doing it then and they're repeating it now. It's no different than what was happening then. It's happening right now, right now. It looks different. And so people are confused because they have this whole um, misunderstanding based off of, you know, however the mind wants to process it and off of these liars out here that try to make it seem like anybody that's coming out here to tell the truth. Oh my gosh, stay away from them. You know, they're, they're religious. Oh my gosh, God don't care about what you wear. They're religious. Well, if he didn't care about what nobody wore, wore then why did he demand, okay, the Israelites to take off everything that they had um, worn and all, you know, to rid themselves of everything in the practices and things that they picked up in Egypt because all of that stuff was never of him. Those, those were things of man. Those are things that the demons and people, okay, that occult world, you know, that comedic stuff that you see going on now and all these different spiritualities and their different gods and goddesses, they, they, these are things sacrificed to their gods you know, and their idols that they were worshiping. And y'all expects for everybody to be dedicated mind, body, and soul, right? To him. And they had to take off everything in an act of obedience. Another thing that y'all showed me in scripture too, that I was almost just like, oh my goodness, I hope he had, he's been probably having some straight <laughs> uh, grace and mercy on me was that he, how he's told even that we are not allowed to round the corners of our temples as far as cutting, right? Even it talks about not making cuts on your flesh. So when people try to talk about that, and again, I have been one, I have my ears pierced. I've had my eyebrow pierced at one time and I had my belly pierced. So for those who think that I'm just out here saying stuff, and it's funny because both of those things had like fell out, like either my belly button wouldn't heal right. So I had to take it out and my eyebrow ring one day is just somehow my skin got thinner and it just rejected it. Right. So I never pierced it again. And I actually hate needles. I have a really bad phobia of needles. So when I started reading, like you're not allowed to round the corners of your forehead, like the temples of your head. Right. I'm gonna pull up the scripture. I was like, oh, my goodness, because I know that I've cut my hair. You know, and I've been trying to grow my hair out and then I had to cut it for another reason and I've been trying to grow it out. But he says um, in scripture, don't round the corners of your head. And I'm going to tell you where it's at. It's in Leviticus 19, 27. It says, ye shall not round the corners of your head, neither. And hear me and hear me well. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. Now in today's society, how many people, you see how slick the devil is? How many people... The barbershop, men and some women are rounding those corners of the head, right? In the corners of their beard. See, you see how slick the devil is? I said, dad, go on in. Then I was over here looking crazy because I know he kind of put on me like it's different to be like trimming your hair, you know, but cutting and rounding, that's different. But we see that. So then it made me wonder where, you know, the whole barbershop came into existence. Who gave that idea? This is how the enemy would be out here operating, right? Who came up with the, um, with the idea of the beauty industry? Who came up with the idea of piercings? You understand what I'm saying? Who came up with the ideas of tattoos? Hear me and hear me well. He says it right here. Okay. He says it right here. He said it for a reason, but the enemy is so tricky out here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's okay for me to have my nose pierced. Actually, it's not. 
because it says it right here. So men should be and women should be growing their hair out. And technically, according to the word, they shouldn't even be rounding the corners of their head, the front and the back. Or, you know, like are their beards? Because if you think about the corner, it's like the side of your forehead, right? In the corner of your neck. Now, people say, oh, you know, I don't believe that. OK, that's on you. But when I read that, that's the first thing that came to my spirit. And I was like, Father, please forgive me. Because a couple of years ago, I, I, when I had cut my hair off, it got chopped off because either I was, it was taking my hair out when I was wearing braids back then. I've only wore, I'm trying to do braids every now and again. Actually, I really couldn't because I would have a chemical. The chemicals would cause me to get blisters in my head because of the chemicals. I'm sensitive to chemicals. So I would never really get my hair braided like that. Right. And so that's why I can count on a handful of times. And when I was taking my braids out, I cut my own hair accidentally. And then um, back in 2019, I went to go let someone trim my hair and they butchered my hair. And I just hate going through the in-between stage. And so I literally have been struggling with growing my hair out only because of the in-between stage, because I actually hate it. Now I, I, my hair, but my hair, um, my hair was longer, at least to my, you know, shoulders. And y'all can probably see my curl powder now. And that's how my hair was then. And I, I like it when I get it to that point, but I don't like to go through the in-between stage, but your girl is going through the in-between stage, you know, um, to get, you know, cause I want to be in right standing. It is that serious. A lot of people don't think it's that serious. You, are, you better go back and pray about it. Don't take my word for it. you better go back and pray about it because people are like, Oh, God doesn't care about this. And he doesn't, he cares about every aspect of your life. And I still be asking him to give me grace, even with, even on my shirts, for example, I'm covered, you know, but I know that my sleeves are still not to the length of where he actually told me, but I know he sees my heart. Like when I go out, I'm looking for it or yeah, I can wear a cardigan, but he also knows that I'm heat intolerant, but he knows that I do the best to not be out here being revealed. So that's where it, the heart does matter. Like there's barely any clothes out here that even come to that link. But if I find something out there, I have been slowly replacing stuff. Or y'all see me out here with a dress that I probably would have had on last year with no sleeves and me putting a shirt underneath it and then putting something underneath, underneath the dress to cover my legs. I'm been, yeah. So don't think I'm not out here, not walking it like I talk it, but there's many out here that is uh, talking it and they are not walking it. I'm going to tell you that hands down. Well, I got to go, you guys. Shalom to you guys. Take care.